Welcome to Prayer Journaling through Boston Library. I am Michelle Williams, and I'm happy you joined us for session seven. This session is titled, Giving Up. In the previous session, we talked about rebuilding prayer. We heard stories about Job and possums to help us understand God is with us, even in moments of trauma and turmoil. We also had a journal prompt to spend five minutes a day writing to God and five minutes more listening to build our conversation muscle in the God-us relationship. In this session, we will talk about giving up, literally giving up ourselves and leaving our whole being and life direction up to God. Giving up means to stop making an effort and resign oneself over to something. Giving up oneself to God is a commitment in faith and act of surrender. We can give up worry, anxiety, and stress to God to manage for us, but to give up our whole selves, well, that's another story. In the book of Daniel, we come to a time where King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon had declared war over Jerusalem. The king of Judah was handed over to Nebuchadnezzar along with assets of the land and groups of hand-picked people to serve the king. Of these people, four young men from Judah were chosen, and they were Daniel, Hananiah, Michael, and Azariah. The men were given Babylonian names and were indoctrinated into Babylonian language and culture. Daniel and the three Hebrew men were very gifted and understood visions and dreams. And after going through training by the royal staff, the four were brought to King Nebuchadnezzar. After many years of interpreting dreams and explaining visions for King Nebuchadnezzar, Daniel and his three friends became essential advisors until the king's death. King Nebuchadnezzar's son, Belshazzar, was crowned and he held Daniel in high esteem. A man named Darius became king when he murdered King Belshazzar. Daniel had a reputation of long and loyal service to the previous royal lines. King Darius was so impressed with Daniel's wisdom and knowledge, he appointed Daniel as vice regent along with several others. The governors of the land reported to the vice regents. Daniel so outperformed all the other vice regents that the king decided to put him in charge of the entire kingdom. The other vice regents and the governors were not comfortable with Daniel's newly bestowed power. The group devised a plan and convinced King Darius to make a decree which stated for 30 days no one was allowed to pray to any god or man except the king. Anyone who disobeyed would be thrown into the lion's den. The king agreed this was a great idea and declared the new decree was as solid as any other law he devised. It was set in stone. King Darius signed the decree and had it distributed throughout the kingdom. Daniel quickly learned about the declaration and understood the consequences. He knew everyone could see him faithfully praying daily in his home in full view of those passing by. Daniel continued his prayer practice each day. The conspirators found Daniel praying at his home and immediately went to the king to report the violation. They said, didn't you issue a declaration anyone praying to a god or man other than the king for the next 30 days would be thrown into the lion's den? We have seen Daniel praying to his god three times a day in full view of everyone. He has defied your order, king. He needs to be punished accordingly. The king was very upset and tried to find a loophole to save Daniel, but the schemers continued to remind the king the decree. By his own words, were set in stone and could not be changed. The king relented and ordered Daniel to be sealed in the lion's den. The king said to Daniel, I know your God you pray to is so loyal, he will get you out of this mess. The next morning when King Darius opened the lion's den, he found Daniel alive without a scratch. During the night, Daniel was saved by God's angels. Daniel said, my God has closed the mouths of the lions so they would not eat me. And I have been declared innocent before God's eyes and also before you, my king. I have done nothing wrong against you. The king rejoiced Daniel was alive and safe, and he ordered Daniel's conspirators to be thrown into the lion's den. The lions immediately devoured the men. King Darius made a new proclamation to all people in his kingdom. Daniel's God should be worshipped and feared in all parts of the land. The living God never fails and performs astonishing miracles in heaven and on earth. Daniel's God saved him from the den of lions. Let this story remind us when we are faced with trying times and challenging moments, God is always in charge. 
Daniel gave himself up to the circumstances before him and trusted God. He did nothing to save himself. He literally put his life in God's hands. And because of Daniel's faithfulness and God's miracle, King Darius recognized Daniel's God as the true living God and proclaimed this to his entire kingdom. This session, as you may have guessed, I will share a bit about lions. This ties in with a story we just heard about Daniel. After you hear more about lions, I hope you will understand more of the miracle Daniel experienced. According to Wikipedia, lions are found mostly in Africa and Asia. They live in groups called a pride and have both male and female in their community. The lion usually lays around and rests or sleeps about 20 hours a day opposite to the giraffe we talked about in a previous session. Both male and female hunt for the pride. They go after large animals weighing anywhere from 400 to 1200 pounds. Lions are not long distance runners. Both male and female lions have a smaller heart by body weight than other animals. They can run in short, quick bursts to attack their prey and use the element of surprise like camouflage or nighttime to strike. The lion will go after its prey but quickly gives up if the kill cannot be made. Lions look for easy targets, often stealing a carcass from hyenas. They are opportunist and will take down prey quickly when given the chance. In the story of Daniel, the lion given the chance would have killed Daniel instantly, as it did with Daniel's enemies. Let us think of Daniel and the lion when we are contemplating giving up our lives to God. Daniel trusted God with his life whom he came to know through prayer and faithfulness. This session's writing prompt is to write about what your life might be like if God were fully in charge. What would change? What would stay the same? How would giving yourself up to God impact you? Look for God's leading during this time and write down anything you believe he is sharing with you. Be open to his path. Join us next time when we will talk about bracing for impact. During these sessions, we have found our strength and weakness, separated our wants and needs, found clarity, assessed how we spend our time, rebuilt our prayer life, and now giving up everything to God. What can we expect next? We will brace for impact for God's plan for our lives. We're happy you joined us for this session of prayer journaling through Boston Library. I hope you continue to find out more about yourself and have a better understanding of God in your life. I also hope you see God working in you, around you, and through you to help you become the person He created you to be.